Hello and welcome to London in Song. In this video we're going to be looking at broadside ballads um, and I'll be visiting special collections at Hesburgh Library here on Notre Dame campus to uh, show you some of their ballads and to learn a bit more about them. I should warn you though that there will be other people in special collections and so I will be uh, obliged to be masked um, and my apologies if this means I'm a little more muffled than usual. I'm here at the University of Notre Dame's Hesburgh Library Special Collections uh, because I want to show you some of the broadside ballads that we have here in our archives. So far, we've been focusing mainly on songs in performance, but it's extremely important to recognise that songs had a simultaneous existence in print. And it wasn't, if it wasn't for these print archives, we would know very little about the mainstream songs of the era before audio recording technologies. Um, before they were developed in the 19th century. So these are some of the best clues that we have to the popular songs of the past. The earliest printed ballads that we have date to the early 16th century. And in the early modern period, ballads were often long narrative poems that were printed in what is known as black letter, a highly ornate Gothic typeface, often accompanied by a woodcut illustration. These were printed on one side of a sheet of paper um, the easiest mode of printing in the early days of the printing press, and sold by stationers or booksellers who set up stalls or stations around the walls of St Paul's Cathedral. The early broadside ballads were ornate printed songs, sold to relatively wealthy people, certainly to literate and educated people. But as literacy rates expanded and printing technologies uh, improved, ballads became cheaper to produce and became associated primarily with a more popular, less affluent market. Certainly by the 19th century, printed ballads were known as a form of street literature and had a reputation as being the poetry of the urban poor. These ballads were sold by ballad singers who stood in the streets of cities, singing the songs in an attempt to get you uh, to buy the piece of paper they were printed on. Most of the ballads in our collections here at Notre Dame date from the 19th century. Um, they are often pre printed on cheap paper, and they're evidence that they're thrown together on something of a shoestring budget. Uh, we have a particularly large collection of ballads printed by P. Brereton, a Dublin-based printer who operated in the 1860s and 1870s. His ballads are full of typographical errors and inconsistencies. Um, sometimes letters are printed upside down, when he, and when he ran out of a letter, he was substituting the next best thing. In this ballad here about the Chicago fire of 1871, zeros are substituted for O's, uh, sympathising is spelt with an uh, I instead of a Y, and the word Irish is spelt with a number eight in place of an S. The ballad is illustrated with an image of what looks to be Moses praying to God in front of the stone tablets, which has absolutely nothing to do with the song. Of course, this doesn't tell you anything about the people who bought the ballad, but you can see why broadside ballads got a reputation for being the songs of the urban poor. Not all ballads look like this, however, and here in our collections there are a number of more elegantly produced ballads from the 19th century, including this printing of Dibdin's song, The Jolly Waterman, which was printed by H.P. Such, who operated in Union Street in Borough, that's modern-day Southwark, um, not far from Shakespeare's Goyle. Such owned one of the largest London ballad printers in the second half of the 19th century, and he operated between 1860 and around 1885. At this point, Dibden's song was at least 100 years old. The comic opera from which it was taken, The Waterman, had been constantly performed uh, across the century, but it seems to have had an independent existence outside of the theatre, among the urban ballad tradition throughout that period. And there's dozens of printings of this song in archives of broadside ballads, just like this one. 